join me for coffee? I'd love to! You're my idol! Oh my gosh! I've read everything and I know everything about you! Well, you see, there's one thing you might not know. I was actually born as Kate O'Flaherty, but at the age of 19, I married Oscar Chopin, and, well, we lived in New Orleans for a while, about a decade, but there, my husband prosper prospered, and then, unfortunately, failed in the cotton business. We then moved to a nice little town called Clotierville, Louisiana where my husband opened a general store and had taken over the management of a family cotton plantation. About a year after my husband's death, from swamp fever, I might add, I had six young children. Six children. Alone. Wow. That's very difficult, I would imagine. Yes. Yes, it is. So, what was your childhood like? Well, my f I was born in St. Louis, Missouri, and my family enjoyed a very high place in St. Louis society, actually. The women in my family were pious Catholics of French heritage. When I was nine years old, I entered St. Louis Academy of the Sacred Heart, and I graduated from the Academy in 1868. So, I heard that a lot of your stories were written in a single day, and that you often worked on impulses. Is that true? Well, yes, actually it is. Some of your stories seem too loose or thin. You completed three novels, more than 150 stories and sketches, and a substantial body of poetry, reviews, and stories of Louisiana rural life. But my far favorite was The Awakening about Edna Pontiel, who, well, I heard that she pushed you into literary oblivion. I like to believe so. So, what influenced your writing? Well, you see, I grew up in a company of strong, loving women from whom I learned independence and the power of language. I had many female mentors in my childhood. However, the death of my loved ones created strong skepticism of religion, which definitely influenced my writing. Oftentimes, I was, I was very different from other women of my time, often causing me to write literature that was a bit different from the beliefs of most people, I guess you could say. So, whatever happened to your father? I never saw very many paintings of him. Well, you see, my father founded the Pacific Railroad, and then one day he went on the train's inaugural journey, and when they were traveling over the Cascone Bridge, <laughs> it it collapsed, and my father died on the train. I always found that to be quite ironic. So you see, it was All Saints Day. Oh, that fateful day. I really don't like All Saints Day now because of that. It brings back too many memories. <laughs> there, there, don't cry. So, tell me about the rest of your family. Well. My parents came from Irish and Creole backgrounds, and my mom was barely 16 when she married my father, who was age 41, which actually wasn't that strange back in that, those days. I was the third of five children, and sadly, well, fortunately for me, I was the only one of my siblings to live past 25 years of age. My mother, grandmother, and great-grandma were all widows. But my grandmother died three days before Christmas. That was a very, very sad Christmas. So, 
What was life like in the 19th and 20th century? I heard that it was really hard. I just can't imagine how it was like to live in that time. It was so long ago. <laughs> well, actually it wasn't that long ago, but I'll tell you about it anyway. You see, women found rural life to be relatively boring. A profound religious faith often kept, supported many women through poverty, childbirth, widowhood, and other trials of their life. Plantation women often supervised slaves and worked very, very hard. Women even took care of livestock, chickens, plants, and harvest gardens. They also did many domestic duties such as spinning and weaving, making quilts, sewing clothes, and performing other specific tasks. Widowed life was very hard as well. Widows were often left with children to support, and they tried various options to earn a living and support themselves and their numerous children. Single women, however, were cast on their own resources as they tried teaching or housekeeping to help a widower keep body and soul together. Single sisters of wives who died young were often likely to wind up caring for the children and even marrying the widower. Women also participated in politi politics. As early as the 1820s, women often participated in political meetings and discussions. By the 1870s, Southern women were already using their church societies to carve out a political role. By the end of the century, they had added secular clubs, many focused on civic improvements. Now you see, you, when you think of the 18th and 20th century, you often think of women supporting, loving, respecting their men, right? Well, they did. However, they also had some thoughts of their own. Men, in women's eyes, were often viewed as selfish, authoritarian, profligate, drunk, and judging of women as a class rather than their attitudes, attributes. So, you see, life in the 19th and 20th century wasn't exactly what you thought it was, was it? No. It's interesting, isn't it? Yes, it's very interesting. Sure. Well, I've enjoyed this talk with you today. So have I. Oh, so have yeah. I.